Hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. It is Tuesday. I'm with Alyssa Bream and Chris Rexrode. I do not know why when I said your name, the name Jake the Snake Roberts came in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any idea who that is? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, the wrestler? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, I do not know why. No. I Unless you were asking why did you think of me or no, think of him when you said I don't name. know. I don't know. I don't know why it came it's to my alter ego. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> So we're in the first 24 verses of Lamentations 3 today, and I'll read a few of the verses. It says, I am the one who has seen the afflictions that come from the rod of the Lord's anger. He has led me into darkness, shutting out all light. He has turned his hand against me again and again all day long. He has made my skin and flesh grow old. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and surrounded me with anguish and distress. I, I have a different question that I just want to ask. Like, do you think this is literal or is he being poetic? Like, do you really believe God broke Jeremiah's bones or is he speaking of the people and the nation that feels crushed? I would say it's more, yeah, more of a, an emotional feel. How he feels the things that are going on around him, not literal. Yeah. He has buried me in a dark place. I, I think that's pretty poetic. I think it's all, I don't think he all of a sudden Jeremiah was writing this out and is like, yep, no, I'm, no, I'm, I can't get on my book. I can't see what I'm writing. Yeah. You know, he, he, he goes out, goes on to talk about as he gets to the end of our reading today, verse 21 says, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. Now, when I read that, because I talk to people sometimes, and I feel like this is how they talk to me. And it, I don't want to go, like, what is wrong with you? How can it be both? You're like, how can how can this God crush you, but you you, you hope in him, you know? And, you know, it's, it's, sometimes it's, this person treats me so bad, but I love them so dearly, you know, that, 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 that and I'm like, how, how can you, how can it be both? You know, like if they're really that bad of a person, you know, and so the, the question that I want to talk about today is how can we focus on God's faithfulness in the midst of desperate situations? How, how can we turn our attention? What are some methods, some things that we can do that, that might make that better? Some of the situations I've lived through in life is when we have like great tragedies. Um, unfortunately, we've seen lots of school shootings. Um, I even think back to 9-11 um, and how desperate people were for answers and feeling lost. Um, probably not even to the level that Jeremiah is talking about here. Um, but people gathered together. People um, came together and supported each other. Um, praying, praying together, being hopeful, um, seeking out the promises of God to stay encouraged throughout it. Yeah, I think knowing you're not alone in it is the first key, and you do that by gathering with people. But I think you also do that by, if if you're 20, 30 years into a Christian faith, you have had stories of God's miraculous faithfulness that you can remember from your own life. Um, and you can bring those to mind. I think those stories can be something to remind you when it gets tough. I think that when you run out of stories, hopefully there's people around you who can remind you of stories of God's faithfulness. I think looking at limitations, when you're going through tough moments, can help you because I think you see then you're not alone even in history that this has been something that has go gone on through history that times get tough, but you can still count on God's faithfulness. Is it a good practice from a practical standpoint? Is it a good practice whether we're speaking or writing? Um, I don't know if y'all are journalers or not. Um, uh, to always end on a positive note, you know, so the psalm, some of the psalms are laments, you know, but they 
almost always seem to end with some type of praise, you know, turning back toward God, yet still I will mm-hmm. depend on him kind of thing. And that's kind of what I see here. He says, long lament. And, but the, before he, he goes to another thought, he says, but I still am going to trust in God. Is that a practice that you have? Is that a practice people could have? Or are there some ways that you might offer that would encourage that? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a good thing to do. I mean, because you're, don't want to say that you're just complaining, but you're exercising, you know, some of your thoughts and feelings and kind of getting them out there, hope and despair, but finishing up, starting and finishing it with the hope that you know that you have in God um, so that other people can relate to what you're going through or have hope to see that, like Alyssa was saying, somebody else has gone through this before me. But to leave that bit of encouragement, one, it shows the faith that you have, but two, it also helps the next person to remember that. Jeremiah um, doesn't end with it. It kind of, the book starts out with pictures of God's being angry or God being angry, and then it has this apex in the middle of, but God's faithful. And then the very last line is, God, are you still angry with us? So I don't think we can always try to end with, I don't think it's like the last thought in my head like needs to be that God is faithful. And I think it's important to remember that, but I think it's maybe a little bit idealistic to think that that will always be the last thought in how you wrap up any story that you tell of tragedy in your own life or corporate tragedy or anything like that. Do you have, do either of you have any practical ways that you reinforce outside of stories the goodness of God or reminding you of his goodness even in the most difficult of circumstances? I think there's there's two, well, maybe we kind of already alluded to this, but if I'm going through a tough season, what I would like to do is to put on the Psalms and just listen to the Psalms being read. I think that because there's such a uh, depth and breadth of emotion there that, but it always does kind of refocus on God's faithfulness. I think that that just listening to that, not trying to like analyze it or doing that, but just listening to people's stories of God has really helped me. I think also learning just in life that two seemingly different things can both be true at the same time (laughs) that, you know, this, that you can be going through a really tough time and feel maybe that God has had a part in that, but also that God is faithful and you can hold both those things in tension and learning how to do that in life through any multiple besides just your relationship with God really can help, um, help you deal with some tough times in life. I think I'm, I'm a pretty visual person. So looking for the simple and consistent things in life that God provides. Uh, If you're going through a hard time, uh, just the family that you have around you, the, the things that are being taken care of. I mean, you, you might've just lost something big, like a, like a particular job that you're working on, or maybe your family went through a a tragedy or something like that. But being able to focus on the, the simple things that God consistently puts into your life to show that he's still there and providing for you. Music for me is, a very recentering piece, you know. I love being in church, just in general. Um, but I find church to be recentering, you know, because I'm forced, to, you know, as part of my job to talk about, you know, certain things. So that, I find that to be very recentering. Um, and I think you just have to find certain things that work for you. It could be a walk in nature, you know, to look around and see the creation of God. I mean, there are multiple ways. I, I've, I've talked to multiple people who have different methods to, to try to, to try to recenter. Alyssa, you said something that I kind of want to wind this down and ask about, because I think we can do it with God. But we struggle to do it with people. You said two things can be true at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So, for example, somebody can love me and mistreat me at the same time. Why do you think that we struggle to understand that about people? And is there any danger in doing that? You know, do you believe that people, uh, so for example, is it possible to stay in an abusive relationship because you believe they love you, but they they may kill you? So. Well, I would hope in that situation, you can see that even though they love me, they're mistreating me and I need to leave. Mm -hmm. And you're not saying that the love overrides the the pain and abuse. Um, I don't think that 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 is a healthy thing if you're especially in a physically abusive right. or emotionally mm -hmm. any sort of abusive relationship. I don't think yeah any abuse right that that is what that idea is is talking about. You said why is it how, how why is it harder to do that for, for people? people? Mm -hmm. I. Per, I'll just speak personally. I view things as very black and white. Um, and so learning that for me, it is hard to do because you tend, I tend to like gravitate towards one thing that this person did this, so they must not like me or whatever. But there can be... Or they must be a bad person. Or they must yeah. be a bad person. Mm -hmm. Learning to see people from different points of view, I think, just helps you give more grace to people. And it, it isn't easy. And sometimes you're just having to tell your brain that. It's not like you believe it, but even just telling your brain that can can help give you at least a moment of grace for that person and help you see the bigger picture and not get wrapped up in, in obsessing about it. If we're talking about God-fearing people, um, the the idea that that god would allow certain things to come into our lives we know that he'll have a limit that he puts on it and he's generally doing it for our good um but with humans we're all flawed and it could be the other person has an agenda or they're not looking to get to the point where you, know, you need to be or you need them to be um and you you've mentioned it before i mean people that I can't remember the phrase that you used in a sermon not too long ago, but it had to do with manipulation. And people people can be manipulators in those certain circumstances, and they may not decide to come out of the area where they're harming you, and you have to make that choice, you know, that this isn't going to improve. But with God, it's not that case. Well, thank you for joining us today. We hope you'll be back tomorrow as we continue our conversation on the book of Lamentations.